Here in lesson seven of module seven, we're gonna look at virtual machine snapshots. These are a widely misunderstood concept within vSphere. So part of my job here is to demysticize, if you will, the concept of virtual machine snapshots, how they work and why we use them most importantly. We're gonna be taking snapshots of virtual machines. We're gonna look at what it takes to manage multiple snapshots. We're gonna look at what it means to actually delete a snapshot. And then we're gonna look at consolidating snapshots. By right-clicking on a virtual machine, you can find the snapshot submenu where you can take and manage the snapshots of a virtual machine. What a snapshot allows us to do is to preserve the state of a virtual machine in the event that we might want to return to the current state of a VM, the current state that is when you took that snapshot. The reason we might want to do this is that if we were patching, for example, a production virtual machine, somebody asked us to uh, employ a security fix or add a particular piece of software, add an application, make a configuration change in a virtual machine. Well, good change management practices will have us have an undo step. What is my back out plan for this particular change? Well, taking a snapshot before the change occurs will allow us to return to that state should that change go badly, okay? Snapshots should only be used by us for this purpose and this purpose alone, okay? This is why we use snapshots in a vSphere environment. There are other use cases for snapshots when we deal with things like linked clones and instant clones, but those are typically done for those use cases in particular. But when it comes to a backout plan, this is why we use a snapshot. They are not backups. There's a massive difference between a backup and a snapshot. A backup takes an entire copy of the virtual machine files and places them somewhere else so that in the event of a catastrophic failure or um, a need to do a restore for, say, uh, any sort of legal purposes, you're able to do that. Okay? A snapshot in the event of a catastrophic failure does not protect your virtual machine in the event of a hardware failure. In the event of a problem with a patch, that is what a snapshot can do for you. I can right click on a virtual machine and take a snapshot, okay? And that snapshot can be taken while the virtual machine is powered on or powered off. What we are capturing in terms of the state of the virtual machine are three different things. The first thing is the virtual machine's configuration the configuration of the virtual disks, the memory, the number of CPUs, and so on. If you make changes to the configuration of a virtual machine, edit the settings of that VM, after you take a snapshot, by restoring that snapshot, you'll go back to those, that original virtual machine configuration. If a virtual machine is powered on, when you take a snapshot, you have the option of snapshotting the virtual machine's memory. That is, let's capture the state of the memory so that when we do a restore on that snapshot, we don't even have to reboot the VM. We just load the state of the memory that the VM was in when we took the snapshot, and instantly we have traveled back in time to the state of the virtual machine. We are also, most importantly, going to take a snapshot of the virtual disks. What we are going to do when we take a snapshot of a virtual machine is take the virtual disks in its current state and make them read only. Any new writes will happen on what we call a delta disk, right? This is the changes from the time you took the snapshot. Because we have marked this original disk in a read-only state, we can then return to that state that the virtual machine was in without having to worry about the changes going wrong. If the changes went wrong, we return to the original read-only disk. If the changes were good, we take the changes in the Delta file, copy them into the original base disk, 
and go about our, our merry way. Okay? Snapshots do not capture independent virtual disks. Okay? Typically, when you create a virtual disk, it's in what we call dependent mode. Okay? That is, snapshots, uh, we can capture snapshot changes um, within those dependent disks. There are a number of different types of snapshots in the uh, vSphere infrastructure. And the type of snapshot will depend on a couple of different things. The first type of snapshot that we have is called a VMFS sparse snapshot. These are used with VMFS file systems where the virtual disks are smaller than two terabytes. And in this case, we have a delta VMDK file. Okay? The block size for these snapshots is 512 bytes. When we have VMFS 6 or we have VMFS 5 file uh, um, data stores where the virtual disks are larger than 2 terabytes, we have something called an SE sparse type snapshot. This is a space efficient or thin provision disk where we support disk reclamation, whereas if you deleted some files from the snapshot delta, then the snapshot delta file actually will shrink. Okay? These are SE sparse VMDKs, and they are a four kilobyte block size. Now, in a vSAN data store, we use a vSAN sparse snapshot. And this is a little bit different, where rather than capturing changes to the delta disk, we write the old data to the delta disk and make all of the changes on the original base disk. This improves performance of our snapshots, and in the event that we want to restore the original data, we have it in a separate file that we can then copy back into the original base disk. This is a delta object in the object-based system that we find ourselves in in vSAN, and these are four megabyte block sizes. A number of files are created when we take a snapshot of a virtual machine. Let's have a look at some of those. Now, with any virtual machine, when we create that virtual machine, one of the things that we get is a .vmsd file. This is a list of the snapshots that have been created for that particular virtual machine. Now, when we build a virtual machine from scratch, we get a VMF VMSD file, but it's zero bytes in size. In other words, there's no data in it. But as we begin to take snapshots and work with snapshots, this VMSD file will store the names and the descriptions and the relationship between all of the snapshots and the original base disks. Then as we begin to take snapshots, we're going to have a disk descriptor and the delta data. Just like when we have a virtual disk, we have a descriptor and the flat VMDK. Well, when we take a snapshot, we have the disk descriptor and we have either the delta or the SE sparse VMDK files. And for each snapshot, we're going to have a set of these files. They start out with dash 0, 0, 0, 0, and then 1, and the second snapshot will be 2, and the third snapshot will be 3, and so on. We're also going to have a VMSN file. The VMSN file takes the configuration or captures the configuration state of the virtual machine. That is similar to what we would have in a VMX file. It shows the number of virtual disks and the number of uh, CPUs and memory and all the information on the network cards and that sort of stuff. Now, if we've taken a snapshot of a powered on virtual machine and we chose to snapshot the virtual machine's memory, we also have the VMEM file that captures the memory state of that virtual machine. Let's look at an example of the snapshot manager and the files that might occur. When we build a virtual machine that doesn't have any snapshots, you'll notice the VMSD file along with the VMDK disk descriptor and its virtual disk. So here's a virtual machine with no snapshots. If we decide to then take a snapshot and the virtual machine was powered on and we chose to snapshot with the memory state, we're going to have the VMSN uh, file that captures the configuration of the virtual machine, the memory, and now we're going to add 
the disk descriptor and the SE sparse delta uh, uh, disk that captures the changes that were made as we begin to, in this case, install security patch 1.0. Okay, so not only would we have all of these files, but we're adding this set of files as well. And as we continue, it's possible that we take another snapshot, okay? Here, we may want to install another security patch before we're even sure if this first security patch was good. And now, if we do it without the memory state, we have the VMSN configuration and now the new set of delta disks, in this case, 002 SE Sparse and 002 VMDK, okay? So now we have all three of these sets of files.